It's common among those who haven't been properly trained in negotiation to believe that making the best, most realistic offer right up front is a reasonable, even moralistic approach. In practice, it just doesn't work. Why? First, very few people will believe that a first offer is the best offer. They'll understandably think that it's an opening position, one that is obviously and legitimately negotiable. Second, if this really is your best offer, you've effectively painted yourself into a corner. You have no room to move, and you'll be perceived as the agent of an ultimatum, a take-it-or-leave-it dictator rather than a true business professional. Proper goal setting, using the three-tiered system we're about to review, gives you the flexibility you'll need to actually engage in productive negotiating. Without planned flexibility, you'll be neither a good negotiator nor a bad negotiator because you won't be a negotiator at all. You'll be locked into positions and stances that literally preclude negotiation. With only one single goal and no room to move, you'll absolutely ensure a situation where there has to be a winner and a loser, and you'll be encouraging a contest rather than a cooperative process. The way you set your negotiation goals will enable you to work with settlement ranges and to effectively negotiate desired results. The critical first step in setting your goals is to determine three things. One, your highest level of expectation. Two, your absolute bottom line, the worst case you can realistically accept. And three, your mid-range or most likely settlement target. Setting and using these three goal levels will give you all the flexibility you need for any settlement situation. Use this as part of your planning for every case. There's no better way to set your flexibility range.